Hey y'all, it's your girl, Sam the God, back with another video on today, on today. Now, I just want to get right into it. You see the title? We're here to talk about living off the grid. Or off grid, as the professionals say. Okay? So, um, here's the thing. Oh, hey, Onyx. The concept of living off the grid is... An, is an idea that I flirted with on many occasions, especially the more I experience the ghettos of living in America and you just see all the ways that they are purposely trying to make people feel as though they have no other choice in life but to rely on overarching assistance, overarching influence on our lifestyle and um, the feeling of wanting to be freed from that or at least have the choice to determine what your life is going to look like and what terms you're going to set is more and more appealing as time goes on. Full disclosure, I've only done a little bit of light research on this topic. I don't fully know everything, so just to be clear, but I have done a little bit of looking around, perusing, if you will, on the internet. And it's interesting. Onyx is on the scratching post. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting, especially because I've realized that I've had a misconception about what it means to live off the grid. So before we go any further, let's first define what that even means, living off grid, okay? Now, According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, okay, the definition of off-grid is not connected to or served by publicly or privately managed utilities, parentheses, such as electricity, gas, or water, right? And I also have like this little definition that I got from this website called offgridworld.com, if you ever heard of it. This guy puts it like, he's like, simply put, one fact is undeniable. Off-grid literally and simply means being disconnected from the electrical grid, right? The electrical grid being the map at which all your electrical needs are served. So whether that be heating, gas, water, um, a sewage system would be considered connected to the grid and so on and so forth. Let me see. I think he has like more explanation up here. Let me see. Scroll. Okay. So an electrical grid is an interconnected network for delivering electricity from suppliers to consumers. It consists of generating stations that provide or produce electrical power, high voltage transmission lines that carry power from distant sources to demand centers and distribution lines that connect individual consumers, okay? Right, and then off the grid just means that you're not connected to that grid of electrical communication, all right? Okay, one thing that I will admit is that I have been of the school of thought that off the grid automatically meant more of a primitive version of living in that you're away from society, you're in the woods somewhere, you have, you're living off the land entirely, which, you know, some aspects of that is true. And you're not connected to the internet, you're not connected to people per se outside of the community niche that you've carved out or like-minded individuals in that sense. Um, so in a nutshell, that's what I was thinking of. And a lot of people view it like that. They're like, oh, you're going to be cooking on an open fire outside. You won't have any running water, no internet, all that kind of stuff. You're going to be cold as hell living in a tent. All of these thoughts come to your mind. But what I've come to realize is that is just one version of off-grid living because as we established living off the grid simply means living off of the electrical grid which means that instead of having public supply or public distribution of your electrical needs you are finding alternative ways and measures to accomplish that same lifestyle 
So you might not use an electric stove, but you'll use propane or another version of a stove that's not connected to the grid. You might not use the main water supply, but you have another means of acquiring water, filtering and streaming your water, etc. You might not use the main sewer system, but you have created another version of using the bathroom. Like compost toilets, which is a thing that I've been learning about. All of these things, child, it is so much information. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> amazing, the internet. So yes, there's a spectrum of ways to live off grid. And what I've come to learn is that it's all a matter of personal preference and lifestyle choice. So depending on the lifestyle you want to lead, depending on the kind of amenities you want to have access to, will determine how your off-grid experience will look. Okay, so that led me to looking up expenses. What's associated with the cost of living off-grid, whether it be on the lower ends or the high ends? And how can one go about living off grid while still being a part of the modern way of living, you know, as aside from the primitive way of living? Since we have come this far, and to me, things are already difficult. So I don't want to choose a lifestyle that would be even more difficult than the one that they've created. And anything that you're building from the ground up will initially be kind of difficult until you found your rhythm and your groove and now you've got it mastered right so all of these thoughts came to my mind and i found this article called how much money it takes to live off the grid five hidden costs okay this is by daniel mark schwartz okay okay and the website is offgridpermaculture.com obviously i'm going to link this article in the description box as well okay now he puts up a chart i'm sure i'll include the chart somewhere around here on screen so you can see but basically it's like how much money it takes to live off grid in detail so he, go he goes item by item for instance land on the low end it'll cost like around twenty eight hundred dollars the average is twenty three hundred dollars and on the high end, $156,000. And that's as far as setting up, as far as purchasing the land and getting it ready to live, you know? And then you have the reoccurring expense, which on the low end will be 42 cents. On the high end, $245 a month. That's the range, reoccurring. After you've put the down payment now, okay. Next, housing, because there's lands and then there's housing. Okay. Okay. So on the low end is five thousand dollars, average fifty thousand, and high two hundred and fifty thousand, with a reoccurring expense of ten dollars to a thousand six hundred and fifty three dollars a month. So as you see, there's range. There's range. But either way, you gotta have at least five thousand, at least, and that's to cultivate a housing situation that's conducive to your lifestyle and also thinking in terms of longevity so i know for me i wouldn't be my, myself at all okay so it'll be me plus one at least and then thinking family how would i create a housing environment that suits a family scenario suits having guests over suits expanding and growing all those things so it is an expense initially okay and then let's go into power so on the low end a thousand two hundred basically average basically twelve thousand and on the high end basically 26 or 20 26.5 let's say thousand okay and it goes on and on and so forth like i said i'll include that so for a total the low end the total cost would be twelve thousand four hundred and forty seven dollars on average a hundred and one thousand eighty seven dollars and on the high end four hundred and sixty three thousand dollars and two thousand and two hundred and sixty dollars child initially 
<laughs> and then the reoccurring expense total would be anywhere from $35 to $2,264. Oh my God, my, my, my mind, my brain, okay? All these figures and digits. And that's just him giving like an overall breakdown. And then he goes into breaking down the five hidden costs, the things that people don't think about. So for example, a hidden cost he mentioned was home insurance, which is a thing that you probably wouldn't automatically think about when it comes to off the grid because you're thinking you're separating yourself from the mainstream everything. But although you're off the electrical grid, you are creating the alternative. So anything that you would be getting here, you are now creating it yourself or finding new ways to accomplish that. So when it comes to your house, especially because you've put all of this money and all this time investment into creating it, you're going to want home insurance regardless. So there's that. Another one he mentioned was heating costs, water, and coming up with a septic system that works. Um, and then obviously you're going to want to grow and cultivate the land. So like the expenses associated with that, and I even found like a video online, I'll, I'll link it as well, with someone who's showing how they live off the grid while still encompassing the modern life. And so they showed their little propane gas, their so solar panels for electricity. Um, they had, they, they drilled their own septic system and like that whole process, I was like, oh my God, like, what the fuck? You know, they have their little farm area, all of the things. So, all I'm thinking about is how much this costs. I mean, my brain, like, what the fuck? So, um, with all that in mind, to me, as far as would I do it, I still would. I would do it as for the aspects of being able to be more independent of the overarching system. Creating your own way is like a more custom-made way of living that's how i view off-grid lifestyles especially because there's different ways you can be on some living in a tent rv or whatever or you can build a home or buy a home even and then set it up in an off-grid way there's like different ways to do it and that is actually more relaxing to me to know that it doesn't have to be one way or another it's up to you and what you want from your life and then you cultivate it that way. But one thing that is making me very painfully aware of is that regardless of which mode of off-grid living you choose, expenses are still going to be involved, obviously. And it's like, as with anything that you do in your life, you have to have a very clear plan, a strategy of how you will do it. And because you're doing something that's self-reliant as opposed to whatever reliance, you really have to have a plan that makes sense. It can't be like a willy-nilly plan. We just figure it out. Like you really have to think about all the things that it will entail and how you will provide that. You're creating your own little community in a sense, you know, from scratch sometimes in to, to a certain degree. So with that being said, yes, I would do it but I would want to do it um, in a way that's more modernized because clearly I am a YouTuber, like that is the case. And I still use my channel as a way to keep track of my journey, lock, spirituality, lifestyle. And I still want to do that. I also use the internet and such as to keep in touch with my family, my friends. That's how I connect with people. And I wouldn't want to deprive myself of that because of this concept of living off grid. Apparently you can still do that. Like there's ways to have access to the internet in a, in a way that's not necessarily provided by an on grid system. So there's a lot of moving parts and I'm learning a lot about it, but I find it very interesting. And I'm just so grateful that I have the resources on Google that allows me to like look into what that would look like and am I about that life? So something to think about. I would do it um, only if it makes sense. And the alternative to living off grid is more so living a um, conservative kind of lifestyle in that you're thinking more of preservation of 
the environment of nature of the land. Um, so maybe you won't be off the grid, but you are living in a way that you reduce expenses, you're reducing your carbon footprint as much as possible. You are living off the land because you're growing your own food and such as and so forth, but maybe you're still connected to the grid, the electrical grid. So there's ways to go about like a more eco-friendly kind of lifestyle. There's levels to it. But regardless of which type you choose, you got to be able to finance that experience. <laughs> that is that is that much is clear. OK, um, so, yeah. Now, what brought this whole thought process to my mind is because next week I am going to be living off grid. For a couple days i'm going on a little glamping trip with bay okay um i intend on recording while i'm out there so you guys can see what exactly we're doing like where we're at what we're doing we're gonna be in a dome so that should be interesting by the time you see this video actually i will be there i'll be there I'll do my best to record that experience and show you guys what that looks like um and yeah in the comments below if anyone lives off grid has lived off grid or is flirting with that idea and has done some of the legwork whatever or even if it's just a concept share your thoughts your experiences in the comments below i'm so curious to see like how people are doing this and how they're feeling about it anytime i've seen or heard people talk about it they just love it they're like it's so great it's amazing so share your experience share your thoughts once again this is a community vibe here so we're helping each other we're teaching each other right um also join my channel to have access to some perks like being a part of my discord community i see y'all i see you members i see y'all we be having a good time a lot of informative conversation goes down in the in the discord okay a lot of that happens so so yes that is all i have for today i thank you for watching and i'll see y'all in my next video bye